This is about some vegetables to eat in the winter and even the following spring, even the following summer actually, in the case of the beans. First of all, we're looking at squash. So these are winter squash, which is not the same as pumpkins. Pumpkins are bigger fruits with thinner skin, more watery flesh, they don't keep such a long time. The winter squash, Crown Prince and others will look at, develop a hard skin, very concentrated, deep, sweet flesh, and they store in the houses best for many months, even until, say, next April. So here we have some Crown Prince, which we sowed last April in the greenhouse. This is Britain, so the climate is a little bit short in the summer in terms of heat to get them to maturity, so it's good to start them under cover. Plant them out as soon as the last frost is finished, which is late May, say. And they've been in the ground since then. Two plants here, sprawling over quite a large area. And the two plants have made 14 or 15 at the latest count. What you need to do is to wait until the leaves start to die off. And then that indicates the plant is finishing the ripening process. The squash are getting sweeter, the skin is getting harder. You can harvest them like I'm going to do here. And then I cut around the stem Rather than cutting into the neck of the squash, it actually works best to use a knife to cut the, the bits of the stem that come off the stem of the actual squash. And then that is the harvest of one of these 14 or 15 lovely crown print squash, which I'm now going to take into the house to keep as warm as I can on a sunny windowsill. And that helps the skin to get even harder and drier. And then this should store until next April, another six, seven months. So it's ready to eat at any time from now until then. Here in a different part of the garden, we have different types of squash. So these were grown in exactly the same way, sown mid-April, planted late May, and they've been growing here ever since. This is October. And the one I like the most for a cool summer squash, but still a winter squash, is the red one there. That's a curry, K-U-R-I sometimes called a cheeky curry, red curry, Japanese type squash. And they're reliable at finishing off and getting nice and ripe before winter and then storing again to eat at any time. And there's another one here, the lovely Marina di Chioggia. The difference you can see in size of those two squashes, it's not like reflecting the total yield actually because the Marina di Chioggia, there's only two off, off one plant, whereas the curry you get between four and 10 sometimes. So you get lots of little ones is your choice, or you could have fewer big ones. In taste tests that I've seen, the Marina di Chioggia scores very high. It's reckoned to have a really, really top flavor. I'd put it up there with the Crown Prince and the curry's not far behind. And just by way of contrast, those are winter squash, all the ones we've discussed so far. You can also have summer squash. So there's, um, scallop squash, different types of sunburst, um, patty pans, those kinds of fruits we can see there, the yellow ones and the white ones. They don't make a hard skin, they won't store for the winter, but they're great to eat at any time in the summer, rather like a courgette or zucchini. The other great winter food in this video is beans. And these are beans that you could pick in the summer as green beans, or the other option is leaving them to dry on the plant and then making an autumn harvest of dry beans. So this is Borlottis. They were sown in exactly the same way as if you wanted to pick them for summer beans. So sown early May, <coughs> mid-May, not too early. They, they need warmth to grow. No rush to sow them in the spring. So I sowed them greenhouse mid-May, planted late May here, wigwam of canes has been great because we've had a lot of wind this summer and at Wigwam the wind seems to go round more than if you put them in a line. So Wigwam supporting them and I haven't harvested any of this structure yet but it's going to happen in about 10 days um, before any hard frost. So that's the first pod I've picked here and I'm doing that just to show you. You open it out and you have these lovely beans and we normally get five or six in a pod and they're almost dry actually. 
I'll put them on a sunny windowsill to finish drying and then they can stay in a jar. And in fact, I have brought a jar out to show you. This is some I harvested last autumn. So these are a year old now, it's still really good to eat. They've just been in the jar in the kitchen and you soak them overnight, boil them up, there's your food. And I reckon I'm gonna get probably twice that number of beans from this wigwam support to give you an idea. You know, really quite a lot of winter food. Grown in a very similar way to the bolotis are these runner beans. In Britain at least, runner or pole beans Grown-up canes like this are a staple summer crop. Regular harvests every couple of days, loads of green beans for every meal almost, to the point that sometimes people get fed up with them. Here is a nice way of altering that harvest and actually not doing any at all in the summer. Again, waiting for the autumn harvest for winter food and spring of these dry pods. So this is a dry pod of runner bean. I've waited for it to go yellow. And look at that, it's a white seeded runner bean called Sa, C-Z-A-R. And these white beans are just the most delicious flavor. They're, they're really, they're so different to any bean you can buy that if you have a garden, I'd warmly recommend you try them. So there's no summer picking at all. The harvest is all from about mid-September, early autumn, until first frost, which in this case could be another two weeks and the last ones that we harvest might be still a bit yellow green on the pod and you can still harvest them to dry at that stage if you shell them out they'll beans will be fatter put again put them on a tray on a windowsill until they're as dry as you want or can be to store in a jar so here is a harvest that we already took from here we've had three such jars like this already from this row which is um around about six or seven meters long 20 feet and so that's a lot of winter food from a crop that's not difficult to grow there's just paying attention to the harvest in the autumn time and then these beans keep right the way through a year or more <laughs>